Trash, Part 4, Chapter 4. Raphael. We met up again early evening. We slunk in different ways as planned and climbed up to our little box of a house, way up the ladders to the top of the pile. We were so pleased to see each other, we just shook hands and hugged and laughed. Rat went down to get food as he couldn't read and Gar Gardo and I set to straight away, no messing, no messing. We knew the clock was ticking, so we just drove on. You think we could have slept? We lit a dozen candles, put them around the Bible and the paper. First, we had to argue about what exactly a book code was. And though he was the one who heard about it from the old man, I can say it was me who saw how it worked. No offense to Gardo, but I've got quicker eyes. He says we did it together, and that's true. We sat and studied like two little schoolboys. The Bible covers were worn and the pages were dirty. Just inside the front was a column of numbers, 937, 940, 922. All high numbers like that, 10 of them, down in a long column. Now, we'd never been educated in numbers, but to survive, you'd have to add up and take away. None of us were stupid, so we had some ideas. The pages they marked were all towards the end, and Gardo remembered the old man had been talking about the gospel. St. John, he said, it is finished. That was where we started looking, and that's where a lot of fingers had been. All those pages were colored in and used so well, they were even thinner than the rest. We had to be careful they didn't come off in our hands. The bit about the crucifixion was on page 940, the first number in the strip. So we concentrated on that page. All along the bottom in someone's handwriting, it was written. And at the time the sky grew dark and Jesus cried out, it is accomplished. And the curtain of the temple was rent in two top to bottom. The earth quaked and the graves were opened and the saints were raised. Gardo saw that each line of print had a tiny number to mark out the Bible verse. So now we tried out a hundred combinations, muddling backwards and forwards. We put the numbers in the strip against the numbers in the column. We tried counting down and then across, but it wasn't easy because nobody knew what it was we were expecting. So he'd do one thing, I'd do another and contradict. We got to a point where we were going over the same ground again and again. All we knew was that the numbers we had, 940, 4, 18, 13, 14, had to be set against the line somehow, so as to turn them into letters. That was what the old man had said, but whatever we tried, we ended up with gibberish. Rat came back smelling of rum with a nip for each of us. We ate and we went to sleep for a while. Gardo and me settled to try more variations. We put out new candles and we weren't fighting anymore. He'd have a go and hand over to me. While he tried again, I just sat and thought and thought and then he did the same. Midnight came around, I think, and maybe that's was the magic. It was the end of the month and we were slipping into All Souls Day. That's the day of the dead here. Maybe Jose Angelico and Gabriel Alondras came and sat beside us. I swear it was crowded in the room. Maybe they put the answer right inside his head because Gardo hit the jackpot. Instead of going left to right, he went right to left. Four lines down, 18 words to the left, he got a capital G. 13 down and four to the left, he got an O. It was the first time we had a word. He moved on five letters and got nowhere. So we decided that the slash might mean to change the page. So we turned over. That didn't help us. So we turned the page back. Five lines down, three letters in, we got T. Then six down, four across, we got our next little O. The slash meant turn back a page. And now we had two very meaningful words. And we just looked at them, hardly breathing. Go to. We turned back a page whenever there was a slash. So we were going backwards through the book of John. It was falling out all over us, just counting carefully, straining our eyes because the words were so small. We made mistakes, but we were laughing because the whole thing was opening up. Go to the map ref where we lay, look for the brightest light, my child. Rat woke up and we read it to him. He shook our hands and then we hugged him and he said, I know what a map ref is. My, were his eyes big and shiny. I was in some class, he said, and they're all doing maps. That's a map reference. That's what it's talking about. Where we lay is where we were, where we met, maybe. 
and he's thinking his little girl is reading this. Open the map, I said. I thought even then he was being a smart arse, but we were learning to try everything anyone said every way. Let's look at it again, I said. We stared at the map a hundred times, hunting it for arrows or crosses, wondering if they'd been marked and removed, straining our eyes over it. We stared and stared, and Rat said, a map ref is a reference to the numbers, okay? It's a line of numbers. Numbers again, I said. My head was aching, but we went back to the letter. There were no numbers apart from the code we just cracked, so we turned back to the map. Numbers all around the edges, but still no way in. Until I looked at the envelope and I saw prisoner 746229. I read it aloud. That wasn't his number, said Gardo quietly. What was it? What are you saying? When we arrived, we were in the waiting room and the prison box came in and said Sister Olivia about the name. He said we had the number wrong because at first I thought maybe we had the wrong guy completely. You go up and down, that's all I remember, said Rat, and that's what cracked it. We split the six numbers into two, 746 and 229. Sure enough, the map had a 74 and a 22. They were right there along the sides and took us straight to a square in the middle. It was in a graveyard. In fact, the graveyard covered the square and we never did find out what the six and nine were. He put a fridge by a graveyard, Rat said quietly. That's what the gardener said. Where we lay, I whispered. That means where we're buried. There was a little silence and then we all started to laugh again, quiet as we could. There was a little light coming through. We'd worked through the night and had our answers. We held hands, we slapped our palms and Gardo kissed me right on the head. It had all just fallen all over us and we were getting close. A graveyard in the center of the city, the Naravo. We'd go and look for the brightest light, a special grave maybe, or a part of the church. Once again, the trash boys were ahead of the trash police, or so we thought. <laughs>